So someone asked if I can make a video talking about my experience with the MCAT. I didn't want to <laughs> because it was <laughs> it brings back bad memories. Um, I don't know about you, but the MCAT was not a fun experience. It's a really challenging exam. It's really uh, physically and mentally exhausting. But I'm gonna tell you why um, I made some really good decisions and some really stupid ones. So I had to actually take the exam twice. I don't think there's any problem in taking the exam twice. I think if you can make significant improvements, which I did, uh, you should do it. Especially if you don't feel like you did well at all, do it again. It's a good thing. When I was in interviews, they actually thought that was a cool thing that I, I was able to improve. It wasn't a hindrance. Only if you can improve though, you have to improve. So for me to fulfill the timeline that I wanted to go to medical school, I had to complete the MCAT in the fall of my senior year. So that that way <clears throat> I could graduate and then I would only have the summer and then I'd be in medical school in the fall of the fall of the same year. So I wouldn't have a gap year. I didn't want a gap year. But there was some bad decisions in this. So the problem with this decision is that I hadn't taken the second course of organic chemistry and I hadn't taken biochemistry, any biochemistry. And general chemistry in the past was a really hard topic for me. So right there, I'm setting myself up for failure because I haven't completed all the classes. So the first time I took the MCAT, I started studying uh, right after I graduated sometime in early June and was preparing to take the exam in like September. I got a tutor to help me like stay on track. Um, they had a small tutor group and they would post videos and uh, questions and when the timing, they just basically set up all the timing and when you're supposed to do everything, which was really cool because I didn't know how to structure my studying. I didn't realize how much stinking information there was. There's a ton and I got really far behind to the point where I got to the MCAT. I hadn't reviewed all the topics that I was supposed to know. I hadn't completed organic chemistry, the second term, or biochemistry, bad decision. So I'm trying to teach those things to, me, to myself. I was also working, and I only gave myself three weeks off of work to get ready for the MCAT. You know, I'm studying the whole summer, but I only gave myself really three weeks of hard studying. I was also in full-time school and trying to get A's. So this combination is just, <laughs> Just the worst combination. You're just not gonna, you're set, I was setting myself up to fail. So anyway, sure enough, <laughs> my worst topic was the chemistry and the physical sciences. Horrible, did awful. And I knew I was gonna do bad because the practice exams were telling me I was gonna do bad. <laughs> so I was determined to do better. Now the problem was I am now going to be one year behind. I would have a gap year. But because I knew I could do better on the second attempt, um, I went for it. So I signed up to take the second attempt in April. And I started studying pretty heavily January 1st. So I had plenty of time to study. I knew what I was getting into. I knew how much time I'd have to give. Instead of working full time, up into the exam, I decided to give myself five weeks off of work. I had a job that was really flexible. I basically worked for myself. Um, so I was able to do that. You may not be able to do that, but I was able to do five weeks off. So it gave me more time to really focus on the MCAT. Now the downside was I was still taking a full load of class. I was actually taking 17 units. <laughs> and biochemistry was one of those classes. I don't want to make it sound too crazy because most of those classes weren't crazy heavy sciences, uh, but biochemistry was in that group of 17 units. Now it was kind of weird. So when I studied for the MCAT the first time while I was taking the second semester of organic, I ended up getting the best grade in the class out of like 80 people in organic. So studying for the MCAT like was a huge benefit to my grade in the fall semester, even though I didn't do well in the MCAT, like, I did really well in school because I was studying all these topics, these heavy science topics. 
And the second semester, it was the same situation. Studying for biochem, I didn't get the best grade in biochem, but studying for biochem and um, doing MCAT studies at the same time really helped each other. I ended up getting a nice solid A in biochemistry, very happy. Now in the past, I had done really poorly in general chemistry, really poorly. And it had been a couple years since I had taken it. So I really made sure that I understood each little topic about gen, uh, gen chem, everything. And because I had done well in organic and because I was doing well in biochemistry, when I took the MCAT, I actually did really well in the chemistry section. I am proud to say I got into the 87th percentile. So that's not bad. I mean, I was really happy with that. That was phenomenally better than the first attempt. I mean, I did horrible. I did horrible in the first attempt in the gen chem, in the chemistry section. 87% is great for someone who was awful at chemistry. So I was excited. Now, <clears throat> the problem was I didn't put enough effort into the car section, the second attempt, because I was so dedicated to the chemistry section because that was my weakest point. I really focused on that. And I would do a little bit of cars, you know, I do one or two cars questions every single night. But with cars, it's a weird thing. Personally, I think I'm a pretty good critical thinker. If I went through the cars sections at my own pace, I usually could figure them out. But because you're on a timer, it is imperative for you to be a fast reader. You have to be able to go through those passages quickly, be able to soak them up, and then answer the question, then, and then hopefully give yourself enough time that you can look back through them. That wasn't my situation. Because I'd been in science classes, solely in science classes the last two years, I hadn't been really doing any reading for fun. Uh, it, <laughs> I'd been so busy, and I found that that really hindered me. And I think if you're gonna do well in the car section, you should just read. Just read anything um, because you got to get your reading speed up. And for me, I ended up running out of time on the cars. I only had enough time in the cars section to read through the passage once and then go into the answers and answer them. I did not have enough time to go back and check if I understood it the right way. I only had enough time to read it once, understand it, and then try to answer the questions. That ended up becoming a big fault and that was one of my weakest points. All in all, I did a lot better. I did a lot better. I didn't do fantastic, but I was still pretty happy with my score. I know I'm not going in crazy detail on all the things you need to know for the MCAT. Uh, I think there's a lot better resources than me, but what I do have to say is that if you wanna do well, you need to have completed the formal education of the classes that are required for the MCAT. I think that is crucial. You need to have finished biochemistry for sure because a huge chunk of the exam is biochemistry it's in the biology section it's in the chemistry section it's both biochem <laughs> um you also need to be aware of your weak points so if you're weaker in one subject you really need to focus on it and i did and it definitely helped with that section but you know there's a lot of sections that you have to study if you're planning to take the mcat while you're in school um, I totally suggest you having a really light load. I didn't have that luxury because I had to complete a certain amount of units to graduate. But, you know, if you have the luxury, definitely have a light load if you have to take the MCAT during your school semester. The timing of taking the MCAT, I think, is probably optimal in uh, early spring, basically early on. Um, you want to have enough time to get your score back and then be able to apply early. It gives you a little advantage. It's not a huge advantage, but it gives you a big, a little advantage to um, apply early. Um, it also gives you enough time to work on all your applications. That was almost, <laughs> I'm gonna make another video on that. That is almost as bad as the MCAT itself. It's, it, that is just as time consuming. So I think it's a smart idea to take it early so that you have time to do all those things. So that was my experience. Um, let me know if you had a different experience. Let me know if that was helpful. If you want any details on that, let me know. So I hope all of you do well and go kick some butts.